Welcome everyone to our Gem Sunday, which we're very excited about. Um, some of the girls said it's our first Gem Sunday, and it's our first Gem Sunday here as a church for two years. So we're very happy to be able to come here. And for those of you viewing on YouTube or TV, we welcome you as well. And we hope that we can bless you as we've been blessed this year throughout our Gem season. We're going to start with our regular um, openings. But I'm going to stand back here, I guess. I don't even know how to get out of here. Okay, I think I can. I'll go over here. <laughs> Gems of Tilsonburg, what does the Lord require of us? We're also going to say our theme verse for the year with you. And now we're going to sing a song, which Abigail's leading. I invite you to rise with the gems.
They can't rise with you if you're sitting down. (laughs) God called us to this place that we could worship him. And he invites us to use all sorts of things to declare how awesome, how amazing, how wonderful he is. This is what Psalm 150 says. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with a harp and lyre. Praise him with a timbrel and with dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So listening to that, what do you think we're supposed to do? Praise the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. And God blesses us so that we have the ability to do that. He says, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father, from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And together we say, amen, which means it's true. Better is one day. Is it-
join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do long for your presence. And we do want to experience your love, your goodness, your mercy. And so here we are, uh, drawn together in this auditorium, drawn together in your house, longing for everything that you have to present to us. We pray that we, pray that we can receive the blessings that you have for us, that we can hear the words that you say to us, that you, Holy Spirit, will move in us and move among us so that you strengthen our faith or give us faith, that you draw us close to yourself, that we can stand firm and strongly in your promises because you are our rock, you are our salvation, you are our fortress. Because of you, we cannot be shaken. Amen. We'll remain singing and we're going to si- uh, remain standing and we're going to sing, You Are Holy. And we've reversed things for this song. Instead of the, men, the women echoing, the men are going to echo this time. Thy word, my bad. All right, we'll sing that one later. Thy word is a You may be seated, and Marilyn will announce the next song. The next song is You Are Holy. We're going to have the, um, the men are leading, yes? No. The women are leading. The women are leading. <laughs> Along with me. <laughs> Along with you. Um, and the men will echo. Uh, and then there's a section where we're both singing different words and different tunes. So you'll have to follow along. Um, Abigail and Harold will lead the men, and I'll lead the women. I think. Say 
saving grace. You will reign forever. You're the ancient of days. You're the Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. You're my Savior, Messiah, Redeemer, and friend. You're my Prince of Peace. I will live my life for Him. Let's do it again. You are holy. You are holy. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are worthy. You are worthy. That song just talked about how holy and how awesome God is. And we like to think that we're pretty awesome too. So that when we go out and about, like a service like this, we, we kind of like to put some nice clothes on and, and present a good face. I mean, somebody has a sign in their uh, hallway that says, to everybody outside this family, we look like we're a normal family. Because we keep some of the inside stuff that doesn't look so pretty, we keep that behind closed doors. We don't always present that to everybody. But if we were to be really honest, then we have to admit that sometimes we don't look so pretty. There's some stuff that we hide that just is not suitable for wearing in public. And so we feel ashamed before God and in front of other people. But the amazing thing is the punishment for our wrongdoing and for our sin got completely put on Jesus Christ. When he went to the cross, he died. And in his resurrection, he gives us complete new life so that he takes off our dirty clothes and he makes us completely <laughs> something. He makes us completely holy and pure as if we had never sinned or been a sinner. He takes off our dirty rags and he clothes us completely in white, in holiness, in righteousness, because we are his dearly loved children. And now, because God is holy and because Jesus has made us holy, our holy God can wrap his arms of love around us and he can give us life and we can live with each other and with God for all eternity in holiness and purity. We're going to respond by singing, A mighty fortress is our God. I think we need to stand for this song.
right, so I'm Georgie Rodenberg. I'm the club coordinator for our Cross Point Community Gems Club. And this year, I am happy to say that we have a Gem Sunday again, since COVID has sort of knocked a lot of that away. Um, I'm going to be reading the report that I wrote, and I may have to ad lib a little, because every time I was adding, subtracting, anyway, I'll, I'll get through it. So um, for the year, it is good to be here to reflect on our Gems year with you all today. When we started up again after the time away due to COVID-19, it was of course very exciting and also challenging. Many of our girls, over half of our club from 2019 and 2020 were finished grade eight and were no longer of Gems age. So when we started up last fall, we began with eight girls, then nine, then 11. Now they're not all here today, so we do have 11 girls normally but they were faithful attenders as well as very enthusiastic. And our number of leaders had for various reasons also dwindled down and uh, Hilda and I and Abigail, our music leader, are it right now. Partway through the season, Marg volunteered to be a helper, so we do have her as a helper. Abigail and Ariana, a friend of hers, a friend of Abigail's, have been leading our worship time and Sarah, who is no longer a leader, had been helping, and Hilda and I have led the, leak, the weekly meetings. Um, each week, without fail, Abigail has prepared and led the worship times, starting each night with energetic and joyful singing and ending the meetings the same way. So a lot of energy in these girls, a lot of energy in the music. It's been amazing. Um, what a blessing for our group. As you may recall, there was a resurgence of COVID cases in December, cutting our season a little shorter before Christmas. So we scrambled and managed to combine our Christmas party and our special Her Evening, um, where the girls and their women guests enjoyed a workshop led by Hilda. Our Christmas break was extended by the new COVID restrictions, so we could not resume meetings until partway through February. And at this point, I have to say, it was a little challenge to squeeze everything in the last few weeks that we really had. Um, our, less, our theme lessons, our Gems and Gents evening, which we did have the second week back, which was a real scramble, but it was great, so that was fun. And also trying to get in some small group evenings, which are those good times where you can actually talk to the girls. We didn't have enough of those this year and listen to them and, and just have personal Bible study activities, badge work, that kind of thing. There was just not enough of that this year, I'm afraid. But again, it was challenging to have enough leadership on the evenings. We would split into smaller groups, but the Lord is faithful and provided what was needed. So our theme for this year was unshakable based on Psalm 62 verse 2. And we've spent many evenings discovering how God is our rock on whom we can stand firm. And you'll see here in front of you is a display of the five promises that we delved into uh, throughout the year um, to, so that we knew how we could stand strong. And these were because of God's promises. So his promise that he loves us, that we can say, girls can say to themselves, I am loved. And the blanket represents that God covers us in his care when we pray to him, so we are not alone. Um, there's a little hand uh, weight for exercising, and it symbolizes that I am strong through God's strength. There's a, a, a dry erase board, a whiteboard that says I am forgiven because God can wipe our sins completely clean off of our slate. And then the globes in indicating that we're a world changer. And that was our last lesson. And we discovered that, yeah, we might not be traveling too far right now in our life as children or as adults, but we can change the world right here where we are. So that is part of the lessons that we've done. Um, uh, it's a little surprising that our year is done already. We still feel like we have more to do, and hopefully next year we can do it. We do hope to get together as the GEMS group in the spring or summer to enjoy some outdoor activities. Um, the setting for this theme was outdoors, hiking in a mountain setting. 
which would symbolize the rock that is God, um, woodlands and woodland creatures. So you might have noticed if you looked at our display in the, by the door there that there is a lot of um, crafts and things displayed that reflect outdoors, rocks and mountain, things like that, the nature. So, But our pastor will be speaking on our theme in his sermon just a little later on. Um, the girls still need to get their badges. <laughs> It's been a bit of a crazy year for me as club coordinator to be a full leader as well. So I'm a little behind, but we'll get there. Um, let's see here. Uh, hopefully as we enjoy the summer outdoors, we can be reminded of the theme for this year, the lessons we've learned. And um, let's see here. Oh, the important part of the evening for one of our girls, uh, Karen is graduating. She's going to finish grade eight this year. <laughs> And her family is here, and they've been here for every GEMS Sunday we've had for a long time since they started with Leanne, their oldest, who is here, and her sister, Rachel, and Karen. So all three of those girls have been going through, but Rachel, we're recognizing, uh, Karen, pardon me, we're recognizing you tonight and uh, today, and uh, I just have a gift for you from the GEMS Club that will hopefully give you some guidance if you can come forward for a minute. We're just so grateful that you are part of our club and we hope that you can carry what you've learned with you throughout your life. Yeah, I'm going to give you a hug. Never mind COVID. <laughs> All right. Um, so I uh, just want a reminder that after the service, you can take a look quickly at the um, table if you like. Um, we are, there is going to be a luncheon that everyone's um, welcome to. Um, I would like to remind you that GEMS is for girls from grades 3 to grade 8. So if you know of anyone that you would like to invite or you have an opportunity to invite, we are obviously always open for new girls, but then at the same time we're always open for new leaders since we're going to need those next year as well. Um, and of all ages, the leaders, it's, it's absolutely great. Um, so uh, at this, I just see the last words. Thank you. We're going to do the, oh, <laughs> I don't know. something a little bit unplanned, but um, I hear a lot of Hilda. My name is Hilda Mackink, and um, I did some workshops or whatever, but uh, GEMS is really um, not available, how do you say that, without Georgie. Georgie does so much work. Every week she prepares everything. I just come and show up and do my thing and leave, but she does all the work. So I think we have to give her an applause. She's doing this for years. <laughs> <laughs> and also, yeah, we have a lot of energy going on. If you come here at the Thursday nights, it's a lot of fun and I love it. I have four boys and I love the girls. So really, we need some more leaders. We need some more people who love energy. So come and join us. <laughs> going to do a reading now so yeah they'll read it up front. okay so here's your oh it's up there oh it's up there okay in john 16 33 jesus said in this world you will have trouble we don't have to look very far for very long to see the troubles that are shaking our world but when we turn our eyes from our troubles to the truth of who God is and his unbreakable promises, everything changes. God is who he says he is. It's his unbreakable promise to us. God is unshakable. Truly he is my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. We are who God says we are. It's his unbreakable promise to us. God promises you are loved. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. God promises you are mine. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be
knew that was coming. We knew that. Thanks be to God for all his unbreakable, unshakable promises to each one of us. Go tell a girl and go tell the world. In Christ, we will not be shaken. We enjoy God's blessings, and we also bless God by giving back to him. We're not going to pass a plate today, COVID, obviously, but there are baskets in the hallway. There's a basket for the regular ministries of our congregation, in, including GEMS, but also one specifically for GEMS. And I've invited somebody else, actually, no, there's a video prepared by GEMS uh, from a father's perspective on what GEMS means for him and for his household. Uh, as we pause and think of God's blessings to us, we'll run that video for our reflection. Uh, our daughters were invited to gyms by uh, close friends of ours and um, we had been sort of searching for others who could speak life and help us cultivate that. We were just so blessed to have our girls come into this at a time where in their stage of development, they were questioning their beauty. Gems as a ministry came along um, and by the power of the Holy Spirit and then relationships with these mentors and these leaders and other girls, girls that they knew from school and from church, but also girls from the local community who they built relationships with. Our girls started to rise in confidence and, and couldn't stop talking about gyms <laughs> and the activities. And, um, and so we are not um, deeply wealthy people, but we would give anything that we have to be able to support this ministry and other girls being able to experience it and learn and be in this environment of love and nurture and care that really just affirms God's love for them, that they have an identity, that they have purpose, and be loved and be mentored by these women who have a passion um, uh, for this ministry. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are really thankful for your word, for your promises, we're thankful for the opportunity to gather together women with girls and in the cadet programs of men and, and young guys and in our young people group and with the Bible studies that meet and with the other ministries, the, the Jack and Jill drop-in center and other things that we do as a congregation to pass the gospel and to pass faith along from generation to generation. You make that possible. And you help us. You give us words to say. And give us the ability to respond in faith to your word. We pray for your ongoing blessing for these ministries within our church family. We pray that we as a community church can be a blessing within our community. It's a real privilege to have families entrust their kids to us to have them drop in to our space, to, to your space, for the, the drop-in Jack and Jill ministry. And we're thankful that we can use these resources to be a blessing within the Tilsonburg broader community. And, and we pray that we can be faithful in helping people come to faith in Jesus and to grow in their faith. We're, we're thankful for the way that we can do that through the church ministries, but also in, in our daily work, in the stuff that we do at school, and just in our interaction in the community and in the grocery store and, and the different places that, that we do our stuff, our recreation. And we pray that uh, as uh, GEMS takes a break over the summer, that it's not a, a break in our learning and a growing, but this season can be another season of walking with you and growing in faith. We are really thankful that you are our rock, our salvation, and our fortress. When we look around the world, we recognize that, well, the world is a, a shaky, unstable sort of place. And all this weekend, we've been hearing on the news about people from Ukraine and in Ukraine and, and in Russia celebrating Easter in the midst of war and combat. And we're thankful that there still can be a celebration of Jesus' victory over sin and death and brokenness. 
And yet our hearts go out to those that are, well, whose lives are shattered um, by that conflict. And, and not just that one. Also the conflicts that are going on in Somalia and Ethiopia and in parts of Asia and South America. This world really is, is not a very peaceful place. And so we're thankful that you hold it in the palm of your hand. That you guide and lead and provide. And we're thankful for the safety and, and relative prosperity that we do enjoy in this part of the world. We're, we're thankful for the blessing of, of schools and health care and stable government. You've blessed us richly. And we pray that we can be faithful in using these blessings to glorify your name, to build up your kingdom, and to celebrate all that you've done for us. We pray this, thankful that you hear us in Jesus' name, and for his sake. Amen. I'm going to invite the gems to come forward. They're going to lead us in a song, The Power Shuffle. Come on forward. up for this one too. It is surely true that I find my rest in God. He is the God who saves me. It is surely true that He is my rock. He is the God who saves me. He is like a fort to me. I will always be secure. How long will your enemies attack me? Will all you throw me down? I'm like a leaning wall. I'm like a fence about to fall. Surely my enemies only want to pull me down from my place of honor. They take delight in telling lies. They bless me with what they, 
with what they say, but in their hearts they ask for bad things to happen to me. Yes, I must find rest in God. He is the God who gives me hope. It is, surely, it is surely true that he is my rock and the God who saves me. He is like a fort to me, so I will always be secure. I depend on God to save me and to honor me. He is like a mighty rock and my safe place. Trust in him at all times, you people. Tell him all your troubles. God is our place of safety. Surely ordinary people are only a breath. Important people are not what they seem to be. If they were weighed on a scale, they wouldn't come to an amount of anything. Together, they are only a breath. Don't trust in money that you have taken from others. Don't put false hope in things you have stolen. Even if your riches grow, don't put your trust in them. God, I have heard two th you say two things. One, that your power belongs to you, God. The other thing is that your love, Lord, never ends. You will reward everything everyone in keeping with what you have done. Thank you. Thanks for reading that. As was mentioned, this is our first Gem Sunday since 2019. And in that time, it feels like everything got kind of turned upside down. Gems has changed, schools changed, get-togethers, they've changed. You guys have changed from three years ago? Oh yeah, you've changed an awful lot. In fact, some of you might not even remember what things was like three years ago. That feels like an awful long time ago. I mean, what's normal anymore? Every time you get used to what seems normal, it changes again. At least that's what it's felt like. For me. You? Or not so much? Yeah? Kind of? Psalm 62 is a really significant psalm. And at least it became really significant to me. Can I tell you when it became really significant to me? It was 1991. April and May. In June, I was 17 years old. My brother got really, really sick. And so during those months, our family went back and forth and back and forth to Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto. And during the day, when I wasn't in school, then we tried to keep the family delicatessen going as well. We had a deli and it just needed to keep on operating. And it felt like everything was changing, un unstable. Everything, every time that we thought things were getting better, then it seemed that it took a turn and, and my brother got sick. Or something happened at the store. Or something happened at school. It was really upside down. And this psalm says that people are kind of like a leaning wall or a tottering fence. And that's what I felt like during that season when I was just 16 years old that it didn't feel like I could stand firm and secure on my own. And the good thing is, as your memory verse tells us, that God is a rock. He is our salvation. He's our fortress. And during that time when I was 16 years old, a little bit older than some of you guys, I discovered that those promises that God made were absolutely true. That you could stand firm on God as your rock. And his promises would hold you fast. I hope you guys find the same thing. You see, Psalm 62 invites fragile people like me and everybody else here to stand firm on God because he is unshakable. God's goal is to make you strong to make you unshakable in his promises. Not on your own, but on his promises. That you'll hold on tightly to that. Because there's nothing else that you can hang on to that's going to give you stability. I mean, you try to hold on to your parents, and, and they're pretty big and strong people. Your guardians are, are strong, powerful people, but they get their strength as well from somewhere. 
And some of them get their strength from hanging on even tighter to God. And that's what makes them powerful and strong. You see, the people who wrote Psalm 62 and those who sing Psalm 62, they constantly point everybody to put their hope, their trust, completely in God. Because He is stable and He is secure. God makes sure that you will not be shaken. Your verse, your memory verse, verse 2 says this, Truly He is my rock and my salvation He's my fortress. I will never be, never be what? Shaken, absolutely. So God says those three things, right? He's a rock, salvation, fortress, and so I will never be shaken. Let's unpack these things. First of all, God is my rock. Yeah, absolutely. In what way is God like a rock? He's firm, yeah. Immovable. And we've got to be clear here. When we're talking about rocks, we're not talking about pebbles. Right? We're not talking about little rocks. We're talking about boulders. Big, immovable, like that. That kind that you just couldn't move even if you had a crowbar and 17 people working at it. You just wouldn't be able to move it. That is the way that God is like a rock. That he's firm and stable and secure, immovable. It makes him steadfast. Always, he's going to be there. God was reliable 100 years ago for your great-great-grandparents and your great-great-grandparents. He was there 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. And he's going to be there for you today. He's going to be here for you tomorrow. Because he is steadfast and firm and secure. Like a rock, he's not going to get moved. What was the second thing that God was? God is my, my fortress. That's the third one. God is my, yeah, salvation. Absolutely. God is my salvation. That makes all these images personal. I mean, a rock might be solid and firm and secure, but do rocks really care about you? No, not, not that way. But if God is your salvation, that means he's rescued you. That means he saved you from danger. It means God has had mercy on you. That he has feelings of compassion and concern and care and love for you. He saw that you're in danger and he couldn't stand by and not do anything. Because God loved you, he saved you. Now, all of us have said things and done things that we're kind of ashamed about, aren't we? Isn't there? Unkind, hurtful stuff brothers or sisters, maybe to classmates, or things that we've said that were rude to parents or teachers. There's times that we haven't even given God the respect that he deserves. I mean, he's the creator of the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. Uh, somebody like that requires our respect. We haven't always honored God as our heavenly caregiver, the one who cares for us and for all creation. He deserves honor and worship. And as the Lord of lords, the king over every earthly authority, God deserves reverence. So, does anybody know the big, fancy theological term for when you don't do what God instructs you to do? What's the big theological term? Sin! Yeah, that's, that's the theological term for when we disobey things that God tells us to do. And sin always leads to death because it breaks friendships. Sin always breaks up families. Sin cuts us off from God. And God is the source of light. He's the source of life. He's the source of hope. He's the source of everything good. And so if our sin separates us from God, then we don't have the life, the love, the hope that he gives just because of who he is. But Psalm 62 says that God is our salvation. That's what Jesus' name means, by the way. The name Jesus comes from the Hebrew word that means Savior. And so when you call Jesus, you're calling on a Savior. And he saves us from the punishment that we deserve because of our sin. 
He's the one that rips that dirtiness, that uncleanness, that dirtiness off of us and makes us holy in his sight once again. And we just reminded how that happened on Good Friday. That Jesus, 100% human and 100% God, was arrested and he was crucified and then he was buried. He died on the cross to save you from the punishment for your sin. He rescued you from death, from being cut off from God and cut off from other people. Jesus is our salvation because he rose again from the grave. His resurrection proves that sin and death have been defeated. The grave couldn't hold him in. It opened up and released him. And by faith, you too get raised to life with God. Life for God. He opens the door so that all of God's love, all of God's life, all of God's light comes into our lives all over again. What would keep you from accepting that rescue plan from Jesus? From calling on Him as your Savior? Especially because that means you get adopted into God's family. I mean, what's not to like about getting a place where you're cherished and encouraged to grow? That you will grow up to be the woman that God plans you to be with all of his gifts, all of his blessings. He also makes it possible for us to connect with other people. As sin breaks relationships, the forgiveness of sins pulls us back together again. And so look around you at all the people here. Yeah, go ahead, look around you. All these people here are part of your family now that God has adopted you as his children. God places us into community and restores that. And when it gets broken, and it's going to, then we go to somebody and say, you know what? I'm sorry, I, I, what I said wasn't as kind and loving as, as it was supposed to be. And so we build up the family once again by connecting those ties once again and showing our love for one another. God makes it possible for us to be connected with him and connected with each other. That's how he saves us, how he rescues us. And that's an intimate and relational type of thing. It, it plugs us in to God as our father and to the people around us once again. And what was that third word? God is my... Yeah, go ahead. God is my fortress. Yeah, absolutely. That word talks about a strong place. It kind of related to the steadfastness of a rock, but, but more of a shelter. Years ago, my family went and visited Fort Louis, Louisburg in Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. Once a time, Fort Louisburg was the biggest port in all of Canada. And so this fortress was built to protect that port. And those walls were made especially big so that when enemy ships sat off and blew their cannon, uh, uh, fired their cannons at the fortress, that the walls would stop the cannonballs and protect the people inside. That's what a fortress does. It's strong, it's steadfast, so that you're protected from outside attacks. The singer of Psalm 62 says God is like that, that he's a fortress, that he protects us. He's a refuge, a secure place. I mean, it's a comparison. God is a fortress compared to what people are like. Now, we focus on verse 2, but verse 3 talks about what people are like, and I've alluded to that already. This is what verse 3 says. How long will you assault me? Will all of you throw me down? This leaning wall, this tottering fence. I mean, in the windstorm we had the other day, did you see your fence kind of go like this? Yeah? I did. And that's what people are like. It is not firm and secure. When winds come and, and blow against it, it's, it's going to shake. And if a cannonball gets uh, shot at your fence, is it going to stand up? No way! But a fortress, like God, protects us from stuff like wind and hurricanes. Mm, even cannonballs. It doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy or everything's going to be perfect anymore. There's no guarantee that no bad stuff is going to happen in our lives. 
But it is a guarantee. It is a guarantee that when bad stuff happens, God is going to be there. And he's going to take care of us in that bad stuff. Because he's our rock. He's our salvation. He's our fortress. But why does God do all those things? Why, why does God offer to be your rock, your salvation, your fortress? Absolutely, that's, what, that's true. In fact, that's what the end of the psalm says. I don't know if you guys got there in your study of the psalm, but the very, well, the second last verse of the psalm talks about God having two things. You guys read that, right? One of you read the one, the other read the other. What are those two things that God is? Do you remember? Let me, let me put it up on the slide and it'll help you. I underlined it even. One thing God has spoken, two things I've heard, what? Power belongs to you, God. God is powerful. He's able to do what he says he does. I mean, a check is not worth anything if there's mon- no money in the account that it's drawn on, right? And so if God is making a promise, it's good that he's powerful enough to do what he says he's going to do. What's the other thing, though? Love. He is loving. We got that one already. It's unfailing love. It never gets extinguished, never stops, never goes out, never breaks. God's love never fails. That's this promise that allows us to have confidence when God says he's our rock, when God says he's our fortress, our salvation, when he says he's our fortress. Because he's powerful enough to do that and he's loving enough that he wants to do that. Because you are his dearly loved children and he's especially fond of each and every one of you. A lot of years ago, there were Christians that were reflecting on these kinds of ideas. And some of them were facing persecution because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And so they wrote about how they're going to put their faith into words. And they used those ideas out of the end of Psalm 62, remembering God's power and his love. And this is what it says, the Heidelberg Catechism, question and answer 26, has that same idea. It says, I trust in God so much that I do not doubt he will provide whatever I need for body and soul and will turn to my good whatever adversity he sends upon me in this sad world. See, it's not a promise that God's not going to send adversity or allow bad things to happen. It's a promise that he'll provide whatever I need for body and soul and will turn to my good, whatever adversity he sends to me in this sad world. God is able to do this because he is almighty God. He's powerful. And he desires to do this because he is a faithful father. He loves you. And so truly, God is my rock. He is my salvation. salvation. Everybody, he is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Amen. We're going to stand and sing Unshakable, or the gems are going to lead us in this. This is the gems theme song for this year.
now. People loved by God, lift up your hearts and receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And together we say, Amen. Jesus is all the world to me.